Hello everyone, uh, we are here for our next section. Uh, we have Benjamin Herford uh, from Heidelberg, that's it. Uh, a, Benjamin is a research at Heidelberg GIT and doctoral candidate in geography at Heidelberg University. In his research and work, he is dealing with OpenStreetMap, Map Swipe, and information from social media. He's developing open source tools and methods that incorporate geographic information systems for disaster management and humanitarian aid. So uh, it's a, a great uh, it's it's a great app that, that we, uh, I I am one of the user and I think it's a. a, a it's a app that everyone loves. <laughs> and so it's up to you, Benjamin. It's very nice to hear you talk about it. Hey, yeah, can you hear me well? Please, please let me know if the connection is no good, then I will uh, turn off my camera. Okay. It's good. I okay. can hear you. Okay. Nice, perfect. So, yeah, super nice that we have the, the chance to present here. Maybe if we are lucky in, in a minute, my, my colleague um, Johnny will also join us, but I will give it a start and let's see how it goes. So yeah, we are talking today about Mapswipe and yeah, nice to hear that you already used the app. So it's a mobile application that aims to make mapping very easy and we do this uh, mostly for humanitarian response and uh, development. And so if you've um, use the app, you know, the screen kind of here that, that you see to, to look for buildings or kind of other features that you can see in satellite images. Um, so what is Mapswipe? I already told, so it's an easy to use mobile app that, that helps to do map areas rapidly and relatively large areas quickly if you're spotting or want to search for specific features such as buildings or roads or any other thing that is relatively where to find in big areas, so to say. And the app helps humanitarian organizations such as the British Red Cross, where Johnny works for, or Doctors Without Borders, MSF, or the humanitarian open street map team to find the places where people live, but also where building data in open street map might be missing. So that's it from, from the app. And yeah, how, how it works basically is what we, what we show here. So previously, mappers had to spend yeah, a lot of time scrolling through large areas where basically no buildings or no other features like walls could be found. So you were just searching in the forest or searching in, in the desert, more or less, for, for things to map on OpenStreetMap. And that took a long time. And the people that did that were very skilled, right? They, they knew how to map an OpenStreetMap and digitize and add the right tags and so on. So... Mapswipe makes this a bit easier by, by only yeah, finding these areas that need detailed mapping. So if you look at the picture, you see that's kind of the total area. And if you then look on the right hand side, this is the area of where, where Mapswipe mapping happened kind of, and you see that you can reduce the area that needs detailed mapping by a lot. So oftentimes it's 90% of the area where, where no mapping actually needs to happen because there is nothing to map such as buildings or roads. Um, yeah. So how's the, the, the mapping pipeline in a way? So first, it always starts with a request or a humanitarian organization setting up a project. So this means defining an area that needs mapping. Then this goes into the app and you can pick one of several projects and we, yeah, for each project, there's kind of a short story behind why this matters, why this is useful, which organization you, you help with that. And then in the end, the results of the app, they go either into the hot task manager, so a tool that helps mapping an open street map, or you could also directly use the results of Mapswipe for whatever you would like to do. So, but our main projects are always dealing with mapping an open street map and Mapswipe is kind of the pre-step of doing this. So filtering, the so areas that need mapping, and those then go into task manager and then the buildings get added to OpenStreetMap. Um, and there are several project types um, that we've introduced over the past years. There's 
one that we call the standard project type just because this is the one that has been there from the start on. So this is the, the layout that most of you might be familiar with when you're using Napswipe. You have those six tiles of satellite imagery per screen that you just tap on whenever you find a building or something we are looking for. Um, so most of the projects we've done in the past use this format. Um, we introduced a second project type, which, which we just recently used, and we will uh, provide an example for this later, which we call the change detection project type. And this indicates um, signs of change. So you're looking for comparing before and after images. And now, Johnny, you're going to join or not? Yes. Yes. Nice. So yeah, Hi. this is Johnny. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so um, we're having a bit of other things happening at the same time, so it's a bit rough, but um, luckily we can give the presentation. So um, Johnny works at British Red Cross and also for IFRC, has been part of the MapSwipe community for a long time as well. And if you want, you can just directly jump in and explain what change detection sure, is okay. about. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Sorry for being a bit late. Yeah, it's uh, stuff going on. Um, so Benny, is, I'm sure he's given a good uh, initial starting point. Um, so yeah, after the uh, traditional or the, the standard project type, we've been working on new to project types. So this one is what we've called change detection so far. So you're showing a before and after image of the same area and you simply tap with the familiar tap once for there is a difference twice not sure three bad imagery so keeping the same user interface but you're you're looking at very different things in the app uh, so this could be used for you know um uh, post disaster uh, damage assessment for example can you see whether there are any damaged buildings um or any changes in settlements that are there um, so yeah, we're still exploring this uh, project type and we'll talk about some examples in a bit. Uh, cool. Um, and another one we're doing is uh, building footprints. So this is where we have a outline for a building already and then the user can simply click, does it look right, needs adjustment or there's no building at all. Uh, so this could be used for a couple of things, perhaps uh, it's already in OpenStreetMap and we can look at uh, whether it might have changed. So you're looking at existing buildings in OpenStreetMap or it could be uh, the output from an AI uh, algorithm or something that said that there's a building here. Uh, and then the, we have a user sense checking if that is correct. Uh, so this is something we're quite excited about to look at for the future of uh, MapSite. Uh, okay, cool. I think that's back to you then. Yeah, Benny. back to me. Okay, <laughs> so now we that. just um, <laughs> want to give two examples of the not non-standard examples actually, where we used MapSwipe in the past, um, kind of here for the standard project type, but not looking for buildings, but for looking looking for solid waste. So, the, like solid waste in cities is is a problem around the world, I would say, and identifying the spots in a city where waste gets dumped is is important and this we tried out with MapSwipe in a project recently where we used relatively high resolution imagery not from satellites but from from drones or from um, airplanes and on these you can see on the right hand side you can identify spots where there is a lot of waste and through that using the same logic that MapSwipe uses like saying yes no maybe so asking really simple questions not complicated things like digitizing or adding tags, but just yes, no, maybe. We can identify also the regions, yeah, that are most polluted in a way, or yeah, that yeah, we identified as waste might need to be removed, or like city planning could adjust this. And so this is the interface of the app here. But on this slide, you see kind of the results on a map, and you see really that this can give you a really high resolution picture or map of the distribution of waste in a city. So the, the pixel size or the area size here is around 30 meters kind of. And so you see that you already some yeah, rivers flowing or some streets 
streets where there's a lot of waste dumped or parts outside the city where there are bigger uh, plots of land used for this. So this is something that can be mapped relatively quickly and with a relatively high certainty as you ask several people to map it. So it's not only one person saying there's a building or there's waste, but you always ask several people and through that you can increase the confidence level of, of your your results basically, right? Yeah. Uh, just to add on that as well, we we were quite excited about this project because, as we've already said, traditionally MapSwipe has just been buildings, maybe roads as well. But then it could actually be used to identify anything that is identifiable from a satellite image. So this with just some tweaks to the app, to the tutorial, showing people what waste looks like. It's quite simple then to say, to have, be, have our users look for totally different things in the satellite imagery or drone imagery. <laughs> yeah, and and a similar like project or like similar thing because we tried something new had just happened recently, where we used this change detection project type that Johnny has spoken about earlier. And um, now for the very recent um, Haiti earthquake, and tried to to identify damage to buildings there. So damage mapping is something that is not so easy. And there are a few organizations working on this. And we try here more the community-oriented, crowdsourced way of doing this. And we are still exploring how close it can get to this expert-based damage mapping. But so far, we are like rather confident, let's say, at least from what we've seen so far. So from um, if you look at the slide on the right-hand side again, that's how it looks in the app for you. So you have a before image and an after image that can come or obviously come from different sources. So it can come from satellite imagery, but here um, it can also come from drone Im imagery. And for one project, we used drone imagery that had, had been captured by a local NGO in Haiti. So and this imagery was super high resolution, so you can really spot damage really well compared to, to the satellite imagery. Um, also talking a bit about the results here. So on the left-hand side, you see results for the city of Le Cayes um, in the southern part of Haiti. Um, and that was based on the satellite images. So you see that already we could identify, or the, the MapSwipe users could identify some of the um, damaged areas. But then look at the right, um, on, on the map on the right hand side, that's now the results that we got when using the high resolution drone imagery, so around five centimeters. And you see that there's much more damage being spotted now than what we would expect on the left-hand side. So basically, that's maybe nothing new. But if you're using satellite, satellite imagery, you basically can only see buildings that collapsed. Whereas if you use the higher resolution drone imagery, you get much more detailed damage information. Also, if only parts of a roof have collapsed, for instance. And... The cool thing now here that we've, when we through testing this workflow is that basically whenever data has been captured using a drone, we can quickly get it into MapSwipe to produce such a map. So it, it took us a few days to produce it. And I guess if, if we would have made a bit more advertisement around it and getting a bit more users, you could do it even faster. And I think there would be several organizations that, that could use it. Yeah, so to jump in there, uh, after an earthquake, uh, you know, you're trying desperately trying to find out which areas might be affected so that you can use that to uh, send aid and assistance. This kind of information is invaluable for the IFRC um, and for our response there. Um, and so I would just to add on this as well, it's like we use this as a good opportunity with the uh, first satellite imagery and then drone imagery that was available to kind of test this as a proof of concept so that then we can look at the results in more detail now and then have a better idea in the future of what could be possible uh, with an acknowledgement of the limitations uh, that may come with it as well. Um, so there's a lot of other, um, there's a lot of other, uh, AI again that looks at the uh, damage assessment uh, changes. Uh, so we're trying to work out this might is a bit slower, but perhaps you know you have real people looking at it. So 
uh one example might be you know there might be cars that weren't in a car park and, and now in a, are in a car park and a and an algorithm will see a difference there whereas users will obviously see that that is not a damage so yeah it's that we're looking forward to looking at this in more detail uh and how it might be used yeah also we learned kind of from past examples that mapping damage in open street map might not be the best idea so map swipe could come in here as kind of a intermediate intermediary tool kind of to still get the information but don't mess up the OSM database <laughs> yeah um okay so um that was kind of the intro part not intro part but more the applied part and now yeah. we wanted to get a bit more technical over to Benny um basically yeah so <laughs> um talking quickly about the tech pipeline so I spoke a bit, li little bit about like how projects are created. So you set up a mapping area, you se select satellite imagery, and this then sets up a project. So that's handling in the back end. So the Python workers would take care of this, that your project actually gets created and will be uh, become available in the app. The app itself is written in React Native. And so, yeah. As we have the intermediary that is kind of the Firebase uh, database where kind of data is stored and yeah, data is sent back from, from the users. And then as an output, we have several data files like GeoJSON files or text files, CSV files that hold the actual results. Um, so that was an overview, but we can of course make it a bit more complicated. So this is just the back end perspective where also kind of the, the app, so the client is, is, is present. But so I mentioned like we have this database, um, then we have the back end. So the Python workers running in a Docker container. We have some um, Nginx web server running. We have um, a Postgres database to store the data. Yeah, and through that, we put it on a web server just to, 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 to put the files there that people can can get the results when they want it. Um, and yeah, maybe more from the, how a project is set up or how does the whole workflow works again. So again, you pick your satellite imagery or drone imagery or whatever kind of imagery that you can deliver in a tile uh, format, like tile map service TMS um, or WMTS. You select the area of interest and the zoom level and then your task get generated. And now the crowdsourcing, it's this redundancy adding, right? So several people take a look at each task, at each tile. And from those single classification results, so you get three to five usually per, per task, you need to aggregate them. And those aggregated classifications then tell you kind of your expected answer or the result. So usually we use majority agreement. So whenever like two out of three or three out of five people say that there's a building, we would assume that there's a building. But you also get the full information kind of of, of how how big or high the agreement was actually. Um, yeah, and this is more a visual approach to this. So you see the entire project area gets split into groups and those get split into tasks and then you get the results for each individual task. I'm not sure how we're doing about time, but probably, yeah, it's good to nice. get to an end, right? Yeah, yeah nice. So. In case you have questions around MapSwipe in general, I think best is always to write an email to info at mapswipe.org. We are also on Twitter since not so long ago. So yep. yeah, also Follow you can ask there. questions there. Um, you reach me or Johnny via email. Um, and we put together some resources and links. So first of all, uh, we didn't really mention that, but I hope that that was clear. So, of course, this is open source, right? So everything we've presented here is is on GitHub, and we are really looking forward to people like yeah helping us out there or like joining our small community because it's like of course not only me and Johnny, but it's also other people sitting in the background, kind of um, steering the map swipe ship in a way, kind of that um, yeah that makes this happen. And of course, you can get the data on our website, or if you have further questions, write us an email. Sorry um, about this. Um, yeah, to cheers, Benny. Well done. <laughs> um, just to add, I, I did miss the beginning, so you may have said this, but like MapSwipe is volunteer-led. 
uh, just like the ship uh, being steered. So yeah, it's led by volunteers and we are looking for more volunteers to get involved. So GitHub is the best place to start and have a look if you're a React Native developer. Uh, We've had designers get involved in the past and anybody that, that really wants to get involved in the project, just drop us an email or go straight to GitHub and pick up some issues there if that interests you, uh, would be amazing. Um, so yeah, like I say, it's volunteer led with support of um, British Red Cross, uh, Highgate and MSF. And we work closely with other humanitarian actors like the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Um, yeah. yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you, Benjamin, Johnny. Uh, uh, it was a great presentation. Uh, it's a great project. I always teach my students because it, it's one thing that you can do with just one hand. I say, if you're waiting for the bus, just do that. You, 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 it's not something that you have to be in an environment. Or uh, so I think it's a kind of gamification. I uh, have so I, I think it's really interesting. I have a couple of questions. Uh, if anyone have more questions, can write in the uh, One, uh, have you ever think about uh, uh, re rewarding someone that is local? Like, for example, if I say that if my position is there, uh, I, I'm like my my confirmation has uh, it's more heavy, heavy more weight or some ways to encourage local people also to contribute? That's that's a really good question, actually. And I think we, we have not really thought about it, although we, we also know kind of that it really helps if you are familiar with the area you are mapping. It maps, makes mapping so much easier. So, so far, we do not collect such information in the app. So we try to collect as few information as possible about you. Yeah. So basically, we just have an email address that you can reset your password and the username, and that's it. So we don't know nothing about our users in, in that regard. What would make it a bit hard, but in a way, it would be super interesting to 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 yeah reward that local knowledge because you could trust those people maybe more than yeah. just somebody from I don't know some some like I'm from Germany mapping in in Tanzania would would make a difference, I guess. Yeah. yeah, even like I know this area, like a, a button, like maybe I'm not there, but I lived there or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I work, I'm from Brazil and uh, I, we work with uh, people from Mozambique. And there was a huge cyclone uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, a lot of all data was like just geometries because people don't know the name of streets or any additional things so i, I think it's good food for thought uh, thinking about uh, the, the local communities and uh, other thing that I, I just needed to clarify uh, if you, someone if for example because this second type of project i think it's great i already thought about like amazon because we had a lot of problems with deforestation and now we have a lot of problems with the government that's trying to hide things and uh, so if someone wants to start a project with you uh, how how it's done yeah so, the, so best way to start that is to just send us an email to be honest or or twitter or anything the 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 contact details that we just gave you before we're looking the app is available for any humanitarian at the moment actors to use uh, to add projects to mm -hmm. uh, environmental application. I mean, yeah, we would encourage you to please get in touch. And like that, that sounds like an amazing project yeah. to add, to be honest. And like, we are also, with youth mappers. So we yeah. have like Brazilian youth mappers chapters. So nice. I think it would be great people to propose. I have a lot of yeah. chapters that are in Amazon, actually. So Yeah, wow, that yeah. would be cool. Yeah. So yeah. we had some use mappers project in the app, I guess, a few a few months or years ago already. So through that, really nice. And if you think about such a project, like just, yeah, what kind of imagery would you use? What area would it be? You know, and if, if you know this already, the, the conversation will get really quickly and it might not take long to get such a project yeah. in the app. And if it's backed by a local community, it's 
it's a dream i would say kind yeah. of <laughs> and that's actually why we wanted to share what we've done at yeah. fossil league so that hopefully people see it and can like springboard into other ideas of of how other applications for the app yeah like the the youth mappers network uh, it, it's a great way to, to get in touch with the locals like a uh, local community in general i have a question here uh, that was posted in journalists it, it's is there any tutor tutorial how to use that nice yeah so good question, um, good good question. <laughs> so that's something um, we've introduced like I would say a year ago, maybe not, not so you have a tutorial in the app directly. So for each project, before you open it, you can say tutorial and then you take the tutorial and the tutorial will give you a few examples and also an explanation, kind of an in interactive way of saying if this was correct or not. So download the app, open any project and tap on tutorial before you start mapping and this will teach you in not yeah. more than two minutes, I would say, what to look for and how to use it. Yeah. So yeah, As we've got. User, we've got I say we've got that great... the design of the the tool it's very easy to use. Yeah. So it, it's intended. So you don't need any training. Anybody can pick it up and and use it. The tutorial will run you through what you need to do. It's a great starting point, but also just to kind of shout out to the community of people that want to get involved. We already know ways we want to improve things on the app as well. Like the tutorial is a, a generic, here's what a building looks like. But we know when you look at a project, the buildings might look slightly different in that area. So we, we have lots of ideas like, you know, before you start a project, perhaps here's what a building looks like in that area. Um, so there is a tutorial, yes, but we still want to keep on proving it. Uh, and if people want to get involved, that'd be great. Great. Uh, did, did, did out data, you, we can find it in your GitHub or, or are the only the organization have it? Yeah. No, the data is open. Um, so it's not on GitHub, but it's on, on the Mapswipe website. So if you go to mapswipe.org and then uh, click on the data tab, you will see all projects that have been mapped in Mapswipe since, I don't know, 2016, when, when this app was started. And you can just download everything and use it for whatever you like. So um, yeah, play around with it, get back to us with questions if you don't understand. Um, yeah, we are really happy about this. And of course, it's the data should be open and yeah, should be used by anyone. Great, Benjamin and Johnny. Thank a lot for the app, for the presentation. Very good energy, and uh, <laughs> I'm already thinking about a lot of things. And uh, so that's it. Uh, I invite everyone to join the Anita Grazer keynote now uh, uh, at two and thirty in the uh, Buenos Aires time. And thank you. Yes, okay. nice. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye. Bye. Bye.